guys welcome to sip code and today we are looking at um episode three of our ionic um series so we are doing um ionic mobile development and we want to quickly see how we can implement some auth guard for our um route in our um, ionic application so if you are new to the channel please do um uh, check us out. We do offer a lot of um, uh, projects, uh, microservices in Spring Boot, and we have Angular um, tutorials as well as full stack. And then now we are doing um, some Ionic mobile development. So in this episode, uh, we want to um, showcase how you can utilize Angular uh, framework in Ionic to um, implement some old guards, protect your roots, and uh, make sure that only um, users that have specific roles can access specific routes. So let's get right into it and see how we can implement that and see how it goes. So um, if you have uh, seen our um, series, we have uh, we've implemented a login and registration. So now we want to see how we can protect our routes and uh, the navigation in our application. So let's get uh, right into it. Let's not waste any of um, let's not waste any time. So first things first, we want to see how we can implement a um, or add a new um, authentication uh, or authorization card, which means we want to make sure that users are authenticated and also authorized for specific uh, pages in our application. So the first thing that we want to do is basically add ng generate and we want to uh, generate a guard so we want to um, basically this is just the schemat uh, the schematics of the actual um, um, component that we want to add so we want to call it let's say authentication uh, guard so which basically means that this guard will just expect anyone to be authenticated and then they can give them access or if we want to do a role-based um, uh, card, we want to say authorization, authorization, just like that. And this one will make sure that not only is the user authenticated, but is, they also have a specific role um, to be able to access that particular endpoint or that particular page uh, or screen. So these two cards I've already added in my project, as you can see here, this is the authentication card this is the authorization guard so let me create a new one that we can showcase how we can um, um, achieve this so I'm gonna put it in common because that's uh, my folder structure so I'm gonna say common then services then I'm gonna uh, the name of the actual guard that I want is to say um, auth um, auth uh, let's just say auth guard um, um, tutorial, I want to say tutorial or example, let's just say example here, uh, example, just like that. So auth cut example, uh, which will be the card that we are creating. So I'll say enter, then it will give us, it will give us a list of, um, in, um, um, type, the types of, uh, auth card that we want to guard. Uh, for so we want to say can activate which basically means if uh, the conditions of this guard are met then we can activate that route and it should be fine and we also can see that can activate children uh, can deactivate can load can match and all of this you can use but for now we'll focus on can activate to actually just block or activate uh, specific routes for specific um, roles or if you just want um, author authenticated users to um, access that route we can do the same thing basically so here let's just say enter so that we can do the can activate and see how that one looks like um, let's see where the guard is oh right I, I did not say services I said service so it added that one here Okay, we can just get rid of this and just um, yeah move to trash that is fine and we could get rid of that okay then we sort of want let's just fix this so we want to say services here 
and it's common services odd guard example can activate yes right so now the odd guard is added here you can see this is the spec of the class how it um, basically is structured and then we can uh, check the actual class itself so basically once um, you've uh, ran the command and you generate a guard and it will give you um, the actual uh, TypeScript class with everything that it um, it requires and then you can basically use this function which is a boolean uh, return type uh, which basically means it will give you a true or a false based on the conditions that you want so if we look at let's say the authentication guard let me show you how that one looks like so the authentication guard that I've implemented uh, in here it basically takes in in the constructor it takes in um, the authentication service that I use to log in so if you um, not sure how to log in uh, just check the previous um, episode uh, we implemented login already within the series so please do check that out and I will also link the, uh, the video uh, link in the description down below so we have the um, authentication uh, service uh, provided which is a good thing then on the can activate we just want to check if if the user is not authenticated, then we want to uh, redirect to login and we want to return false, otherwise return true. So if they are authenticated, just return true and we are good to go from there. So it's a simple check just to make sure the user is authenticated and the user uh, needs to be redirected to login. So let's say if um, I, uh, let's go to the application. Uh, let me just go here let's do let's log in and show you what i mean uh, password one uh, let's just log in so now it takes me to the login uh, screen uh, what happened here uh, let's check my modules and core activities okay i might need to just rebuild uh, let me just uh, i will make serve uh, because the application is down Right, so let me run the application. So basically, even if I'm logged in, um, if, I, if I try to perform any particular action within the application itself, it should basically just log me out and take me back to the login screen like that. So we are seeing that it's, it's uh, just checking for that. So if we check the route, um, we can define the route in the um, routing module uh, dot ts, which basically looks like um, okay. We're gonna come back to this guy. Uh, let's wait a moment. Let's come back here. Let's refresh this. Okay, right. So what I was saying is on the routing. Uh, let's go to app routing, which is the default one on your application. So you see where the routes are being um, defined here. We can basically add. Um, the can activate check, which is basically that check over there. So the guard is authentication guard and authorization guard. And then we give it which roles we want that route to have. So if anyone tries to navigate to our dashboard, we want to make sure that they have these roles um, as part of um, uh, their, their permissions uh, from the back end. And the authorization guard will take that role to make sure that the guy is actually allowed to access this page. So the author the authentication just checks if the guy is uh, logged in, which is good. But then the authorization now checks if the guy that is logged in has any of these roles that we've defined here. And let's see how we get to achieve that. So we come back here. So the same thing, it's still the same uh, auth guard, uh, but what it does is it takes in on the constructor, it takes in the authentication service, which basically checks for the user token, if the user's logged in or not, and all those things. So we take that service and we come to our can activate right here. Now I can activate, basically we uh, take the route snapshot, and we also have a boolean return type here. So what we do is we say route.data, we want the roles from the route snapshot. So basically we're getting the details and we want the data and we need the roles from that. 
like we defined um, on the right itself here. So if you can see, we have data and we have the roles defined clearly over there. So we are taking that. So basically, this, was, this will give us the list of uh, those roles that are specified. And then the next thing that we do is for us to uh, basically take the uh, token uh, payload right here. So we decode the token just like that. And then we basically um, check. First things first, we check if the user is authenticated. That's where we start all the time. Make sure the user is authenticated. Then we say the token payload, uh, we want the role for each and we want to iterate the roles in the token itself. And then we say the claim can be any. So as we iterate, we want to say expected roles includes uh, claim uh, dot um, authority. So the authority is the actual role and we say access is true. Now, the reason why we iterate the payload is to make sure that if the user has more than one role, right? And that or one of those roles is included in um, in the expected roles, then we want to say the access is true. If the access is true, once we're done with our iteration here, once we're done with this check, we then say, hence, we, hence the access variable comes from here. So we then say, because the access is set to true, if it is true, then activate that route for the guy. So allow them to continue. Otherwise, just return false. So access here is basically a placeholder to check as we iterate the roles over here that do they have this role and do they have access to it. So if it's true, then we're going to get true um, on the access and then that will basically return. Otherwise, it will just block um, that user from accessing that route because they do not have the expected role as, um, as uh, defined in their uh, claim uh, authorities uh, from the JWT token. So this is how we can check if the guy has um, it has the permissions to access a specific route. And then because this is um, a Boolean, when it comes back here, it, it will just say true or false. So now let me show this example quickly. Let's say for profile. Yes, profile here. I'm going to remove this uh, role user from profile and I will save this. Then let's go back to application. And you can see that we already logged in and it's gonna refresh, that's fine. Uh, so let's just wait for it to come back. We still logged in because our token is still uh, valid, right? And then we're gonna go to bank. We can access bank messages. We can see messages uh, and then we say profile and profile is not being picked up. Let's check why is profile not being picked up. So profile is in oh it's dashboard tabs profile so it's not checking this one so the route is in here so let's go to the correct routing module which is this one in here so it's in the tabs because you can see here dashboard tabs profile that's where the um, route is defined so let's go to profile right here this is profile now we want to remove this role from that so we say anyone, any user that has the role user should not be able to access profile. But we're just doing a test. Obviously, you would want every user to access their profile. So now it's refreshing. And you will see it instantly after refreshing, it took us back. So I just refresh this. It took us back to the um, default um, or to the home page. So let's just log in again. Uh, let's just log in. Uh, all right, uh, that looks good. Cool. So now we've logged in and we go to bank that we can access, messages we can access, profile. I'm clicking on profile, nothing is happening. And I click on menu, I get what I uh, need, but profile I cannot access because my role is user and user is not defined in the expected roles in here. In the route itself so basically we've protected the route from being accessed by users that uh, do not have that permission and we know this because um, we've tried it and it's not working so now let me show you even if I do 
that and i love the fact that this is on the browser so i can even put uh hard code the path try to access it it will still go to the same validation and then redirects back to 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 home which is one thing that we want to achieve so here i just need to fix my um redirect so that it goes back to the login just like we expect here so the old guard looks good and everything looks fine so any user that is not authenticated and not authorized they can't access those parts that you've defined um, over there so the only part that we should leave out is basically uh, login so you can see this part here which is the default path and it's login you need everyone to access login you need um, everyone to access like your uh, register if it's a different route you need everyone to access your help uh, or faqs and things like that but um, internal like um, um, data centric uh, pages you want to make sure that not only are the authenticated guys have access but also they need to be um, authorized do they have the right permission are they admin are they super user and things like that so i want to keep this one short and sweet and i hope that it helps you to protect and guard your application uh, from front end as well uh, and you can reinforce these also from the back end to make sure that everyone when they call an api they should call them with the expected roles and they shouldn't be doing any other business except what they are allowed to do within the system so this is another layer of security to make sure that your system is proper and there are no um, cracks within uh, what you are building or product you are developing so i hope this helps um, and i hope that you do like and subscribe uh, we'll see you on the next one where we'll be um, adding an interceptor to make sure that our jwt is sent with the um is sent with every http request that we do to the back end and i will show you uh on a, uh, on the next episode but for now happy coding cheers